Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is Deproject Screen to World? Let's go ahead and look at the note itself, and then we will go ahead and cover what it does, and we'll go from there. Now, do note Deproject Screen to World and Convert Screen Location to World Space are the same thing. They will function the same and they will give us back the same results. It just happens to be two different nodes to, that does the same thing. Let me go ahead and disconnect this over here. Let me go ahead and hit play and then we'll go ahead and click my mouse. We get a value of roughly 0, 0, 0 on the XYZ and a second one of 0, negative 1, 0. Now what this is, the top value is the location of the center of my screen on my camera in world space. Where in this world is this location at? And the bottom one is which direction is it facing? So for example, if I look to the left and I do it again, we still have roughly zero, zero, zero. We haven't changed our location, but our rotation is now negative one on the X. Now if we look this way, we'll see positive one on the Y and we look this way, we'll see a positive one on the X, assuming I can get close enough. There we go. And of course, any variation between is going to give us the direction we're facing. It's basically a normalized vector in that direction. Now to show you what I mean in terms of being accurate, let's hit play. This is our default location. I'll eject and I'll grab my player. Here's my player. You'll notice my positive X is in this direction. My negative X is in this direction. My positive Y is this direction and my negative Y is in this direction. So by default, we are facing the negative Y with no difference on the X or the Z. So when I click, that's why we get a negative one on the Y. That is the direction we're facing. And of course the opposite is a positive. Now looking at the node itself, it's pretty simple. It takes in a player controller reference. Now this is something to note. Just because it takes in the player controller reference doesn't mean it is going from the player or the character or the mesh. It's actually coming from where the camera is at. I can show you that. Right now, if we were to open up my character and look at my camera, I have my camera roughly centered in the middle of the character. If I was to pull my camera back, let's go from negative 10 to something like negative 110. And we'll go ahead and hit play this time. You'll notice we're behind our character, and when I hit the click button, look at our Y. Our Y is now at roughly 100. We've pulled back our camera 100 units, so now our Y is showing us 100. And if we were to rotate, your X and your Y are going to show that it's changing. Because when we eject, even though our player is here, our camera is behind the character in this location, which is roughly 100 units behind it. And of course, if we were to look at our character, and then rotate our character, that camera is going to rotate around it at all points, and it's going to be roughly 100 behind it every time. So that's something to note. When you are using this node, it goes from basically where the camera is at, so keep that in mind. Now the other input is the screen position. Where in screen space, so basically the top left is 0, 0, and the bottom right is your resolution or your viewport size, where inside of there do we want to actually determine our position? In my case, for this example, I'm grabbing the viewport size and dividing by two. So that gives me literally the middle of the screen. So that's why when we rotate this, we're getting our X, Y, and Z of roughly zero. Now, if I was to move, you're going to notice our values are going to start changing. Let's grab this little item here and look at its location. The pivot point here is roughly negative 550, 10, and 20. So if we were to move the middle of our screen over to here, roughly there, we're going to get, if assuming we're there in the exact same spot, we're going to get negative 550, 10, and of course a Z of zero because I'm below it. If I jumped up, you can see our Z goes up and down. So this is basically where in the world is this camera point for its root point? And that's it. Where in this world is this camera point? And the bottom number is our rotation so we can get a basically a forward facing direction. We know which way this 
location that we are currently facing. Looking at the, okay, so those are the inputs. And our output, like I mentioned, is going to be our position and our direction. And a return value is basically whether or not it was successful or not. Uh, I don't think I've ever had an issue with it not coming back, but it's possible if you don't have a good screen position, you're going to get back an invalid world position. So that's technically possible. To show you what I mean by the fact that it is, okay, so let me finish covering the outputs and let me show you a few more things. So our outputs are the world position and the direction. Like I mentioned, it's where in the world is this going to be and which direction is this going to be facing. So those are our outputs. These are some things to note. So the position, direction, and posi the input position, output position, and direction, they're all relative. So when I hit play and I'm going the, from the center here, you'll notice it's zero, zero, zero for my X, Y, and Z. And when we were to look at our character, which we had right here, our again, Y is on this axis with negative facing that way and X is on this axis. So it maps up properly. Let me change this instead of being like this and let me change it to the zero, zero, zero values on here so basically it's going to be the left top left corner is where we're going to project from and we'll go and hit the button and you'll notice it now says negative 10 0 and 5. now why is our y 0? well keep in mind it's relative to the player we have a oops, let me close this let me start this up again let me click and then let me eject from here keep in mind let me click our player to show this we have our X in this axis, but our Y is our forward and backward axis. Z is our up and down. So even though it's X and Y in 2D space, it's actually X and Z in 3D space. So from our viewport, we're at negative 10 on the X, so we're over here roughly, and our Z is going to be 5, which is going to be up here. Remember, Z positive is on this axis. Our zero, zero point on our viewport is roughly this location in world space, negative 10, zero, and five. And I can show you that works properly if we go ahead and we do this, we'll recombine these. We'll get our viewport size, so this will be the bottom right corner. We should get roughly the opposite results. 10 in the X now, so over to the right and down Z on the, on the Z, negative five. So the bottom right corner is 10, negative five. And of course, if we move things, you'll see your values change. But keep in mind in terms of X and Y, on the 2D viewport, it's more than likely, assuming your character is um, standing up, Z is going to actually be your Y on the X and Y axis. And of course, it changes based on X and Y and Z. And if you're looking down, now of course I have an X and a Y that changes based on which direction I'm, I'm moving, as you can see here. So that's two things to keep in mind. It's more likely if you're confused why your Y isn't changing, it's because you're using normal Z up direction and your Y will technically be your Z. Now looking at our convert screen location to world space node, it's going to be the same as this one, but the difference is this is not a collapsible int, it's just an X and a Y. Same thing as if we were to split this, the results are still the same. And let me show you an example of what we might use this for. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing our player controller and I'm grabbing the viewport divided by two, converting that to world space, and I'm using that to cast out a line trace. This basically gives me from my center of my character a line trace forward, as you can see here. So I'm line tracing forward, I'm hitting things, and you can see I fire out and you can see my line trace right there. The useful part about this is it's really easy to convert the, the 2D screen space to world space. So for example, let me disconnect the Y and do 100 on the Y. What this is going to do is give me a point roughly around here to fire off from. So if I fire off, you can actually see it's now a much higher point rather than the center. Rather than firing from the middle location forward, it's going to fire from here and go in the direction that I'm facing. And you can see it, I fire and you can see me move it. You can see it working. Something like this might be useful if, for example, you wanted to use a 2D user interface element and see what's behind it. So for example, your user interface while you're playing could have a targeting reticle somewhere else. And then you could see what's behind it in the world space by doing basically 
converting it, grabbing the direction, going forward a little bit, and line tracing from where it is to where you want to go to. So that's a use for it's useful if you want to convert a 2D element, especially like user interface element, and see what might be behind it. So that's it. That's going to wrap up our deproject screen to world node and the convert screen location to world space node.